Hello everybody, Devin here again with my second video of today, and uh, this is going to be a boot review, because you guys seem to really like the first two I put up. So today I have for you a pair of desert, uh, hot weather combat boots. And um, these are a pair of hot weather combat boots that I actually like. And the reason I actually like them is because they're not made by America. Um... These are Canadian hot weather combat boots, and uh, we're going to compare them to a pair of American hot weather combat boots today, and uh, I'll explain to you some of the features that I, I look for. Um, but first off, we're going to go over these. Uh, now, these are uh, based off of the American uh, design of hot weather boots, because before uh, the global war on terror, Canada didn't have a desert boot so so back in like the 90s and stuff uh when they came out with their desert camouflage they needed some boots to go with it and they obviously went to their neighbor america who's probably their closest ally to uh look for you know influence on these and initially they ended up just taking u.s combat boots all right and uh, eventually they, they realized there were some shortcomings of those. Canada made their own. And that's how they got these. Now, these have a lot of features I, I really like in boots. I like the uh, top-to-toe lace design, uh, which gives you a lot more adjustability in how the boot fits. Um, I like how these are padded, um, whereas American hot weather combat boots aren't. Uh, they do get a little bit warmer than the American ones. Uh, these are a lot more comfortable right out of the box than the American ones. Um, they're, they're overall a much, much, much better design. I like how they have relief cuts in here. So you, the boot doesn't bind as much when you, when it flexes. Um, they have pretty much the same eyelets as the American boots do. Um, the, uh, they utilize a lot more leather than the American boots too. Like, uh, the Americans, uh, utilize, uh, they pretty much just have this toe cover part is leather and then the back is leather, and then the whole entire upper part of the boot is nylon, except for the part where the laces go through, which I, I don't like. I like having the much larger amount of leather that are on these boots than the American boots. All right. And now, I like this sole pattern a lot better than a lot of the American boots, because the American boots were just essentially copies. They're original ones were just copies of like the Vietnam era and like 1980s era green and black jungle boots um which had the big uh chunky Panama lug outsole uh which is actually a lot thinner so they um the Canadians put a very very heavy um midsole in their boot for comfort so you'll see these kind of two little bits of rubber here uh the rand and then there's this kind of lighter beige color that's the midsole, and then this darker brown layer on the bottom is the outsole. So um, everything is uh, Goodyear welted together. And then at the toe, uh, it's reinforced stitched through the outsole. Uh, these are Vibram outsoles. I really like Vibram outsoles. And this has a, a pretty standard tread pattern. Um, it's not really um, super chunky. It's not super aggressive. It's not really deep. Uh, it's got multi-directional lugs for for good traction. So it's a very well good design boot. So and now we'll bring in uh, America's, one of America's newest pairs of combat boots. And that would be these. And these are like the Coyote Brown ones that the Army is using with their OCP. Um, and they have the same exact outsole. All right. This is the standard outsole. But they did not the reinforced stitching at the top which is just a quality care thing and their boots are not stitched they are direct molded uh which is a pretty good attachment method uh they've been running with that for for years and it works well but i like having the stitching too along the outside to help um now their boot doesn't have as thick of a midsole as the canadian one and their midsole isn't exposed so it's covered all the way around the sides with the same uh outsole so the this is this side part is actually part of the outsole and it's cup shaped 
it's two pieces that are fused together right here along this this end but it's essentially one piece and it's cup shaped and it fits over the midsole um now that's that's going to help improve the durability of the boot um but in the end it's it's i still think not as nice as the canadian one now they these have a big 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 improvement uh compared to the uh old versions as they added uh extra rows of stitching to make sure nothing comes apart um I don't like how the laces don't come as far forward. A lot of people like these style better, but for me personally, I like the top-to-toe lace style design. Uh, but it's still got the standard speed laces and everything. Um, but you can see here where there's a lot less leather. It's all nylon. All right, and what nylon is, it's very thin. It's not very supportive. It's, you know, it's very easy to roll your ankle in these boots. It's very, very easy to get foot injuries. Uh, in these so and as you can see there's no leather up the back there's no leather at the top so it's just um it's not as nice uh it does have the drain vents though uh which i don't know why you need in the desert uh it seems to be uh unnecessary uh for this point but if there's a lot of people that are being issued these that aren't in desert environments so i understand why they have to try to to encompass everybody as far as standardization purposes go and they do help breathe uh, a little bit the canadian boots uh, do not have those little vents, so theirs uh, tend to get a little bit warmer. Um, but so we'll throw these back here together, and uh, we'll take a look at them here. I pushed the tongues down in each of them, so you can see the inside. Um, you see how this is a much nicer, more streamlined design. There's less parts to rub or cut into your skin and stuff like that. Um, the uh, edging on this is nylon, which it creates a lot sharper edge than the Canadian ones, which have leather. Uh, Canadians have a leather padded back, uh, which is nice because it keeps the boot from sliding around and stuff like that with the suede. The American ones have nylon. Um, uh, as you can see, this rough edge here, it's, it sticks out and it can move, which would cut in. Uh, it's, it's a very, very rough edge, as you can see, the frays and stuff like that. And uh, you, this seam here, which is a thicker part of the boot... So it doesn't flex as much, which causes it to rub on your ankle, which is why you see a lot of U.S. troops getting ankle blisters, because their boots aren't designed as well. Which the Canadians put this kind of nice um, fabric in here, this kind of slidey fabric, and it's it, it helps a lot as far as the comfortability goes. And I wish the U.S. would do that. Um, but before these existed, uh, the influence the Canadians took, uh, took off of... Uh, I only have the black and... Uh, the black and green pair but uh this is pretty much what the original u.s jungle boots looked like uh hot weather boots is they're called they're not really jungle boots uh other than on the collector's market but these are considered the hot weather boots and uh you can see they have pretty much the same build as the brown ones um nylon and leather speed laces two uh regular eyelets um but they have a different outsole and you can see original canadian boots with this panama outsole and the panama outsole came came about in 1945 i believe it was invented by a guy but before they could put it on a boot um they the war ended world war ii ended so they did have special jungle boots in world war ii actually they're extremely rare uh, i used to own a pair and i ended up selling them to a collector for a huge amount of money like ungodly large he paid me like two grand for for a pair of shoes just because they were pretty much unused so i thought i came out on top but now i'm kind of regretting it because i realized they're worth a lot more than that um in pretty much unused condition but the panama outsole made its debut in vietnam it appeared on pretty much every single boot uh toward towards the end of vietnam the original ones had a different lug pattern uh, but by the end of Vietnam, pretty much everybody was using this outsole. And this is what the U.S. used. Even up to today, you can find desert boots made with this this type Panama outsole. But that's pretty much, this is pretty much the inspiration here. Uh, you can see uh, these are both the same size. Uh, the Canadian ones have a much more thicker outsole for comfort. Um, they have a lot nicer uh, materials, way more leather. They're padded. Um <clears throat> pretty much the same lacing style except the canadian ones just go a little bit further towards the toes um and this is just um a very very good comparison between two very geographically similar and militarily similar countries uh, you could see how the canadians i think tend to care about their troops 
a little bit more uh, than the Americans do. I mean, if in the end, if it works, it works. And I'm sure I can, ca- uh, somebody would argue the point with me that, oh, I never had any problems with my American boots. And again, this is just for me. This is all just my opinion. Um, so, so please don't, don't attack me too hard. Um, but <clears throat> I like the Canadian boots better. They have a lot more features, uh, than I like over the American boots. Um, but I like the American boots as well. As you can see, I've, well, I've worn these a lot. There's wear points in them. I take care of them. Uh, I use these a lot, especially in the summer when I'm working. Um, now that they are broken, but right out of the box, you tend to have a lot more problems with American boots than you do with other countries because they tend to put more care into their boots. So that's all I'm trying to say. Uh, so I will leave this video here. Uh, hopefully you guys guys like this video and um, and uh, you like shoes and stuff like that. I, I, I'm very uh, excited about this playlist. Almost as excited as much as my uh, helmet ones because I, I love shoes. I love boots. I have a lot of pairs of shoes. And um, I like to uh, help people find shoes and stuff that will work very well for their feet and things like that because a lot of people I think it's like what is it 90 percent of people in America here are wearing the wrong shoe uh the wrong shoe size or the wrong insole or something is wrong about their footwear for their feet and uh I I try to help people with those problems so if you have any questions or comments or if you need help finding anything or if you need uh, help sizing something or if you're looking for something specific um I'll do my best to help you out in the comments if you have any questions at all. Uh, please suggest topics for future videos if you want to see a specific uh, pair of boots or if you want to know about a specific pair of boots. I'll do my best to inform you and if I don't have a pair, um, I probably won't do a video on it, but I can at least give you some background information as far as military boots go from just about any time period. So I will leave this video here then. And hopefully, if you're new, you subscribed, if you like this sort of thing. Uh, I know the boots aren't as popular as the helmets, but um, maybe they'll get there someday. Um, and I will hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.